Hello everyone, welcome back to GGN. This is part three for this news report. Today I'm going to just continue here. Uh, email tells Fed to make sequester as painful as promised. So says a perfect example of the White House deception when it comes to slowing the growth of government. Do not forget, despite what you hear from the state-controlled proxy media, there are absolutely no cuts in the sequester, just a decrease in the plan increase. It's like getting a 3% raise from your boss and then whining that you got a pay cut because you were expecting 5%. Obama blames his guards for closing White House tours. President Obama is blaming the U.S. Secret Service for politically damaging decision to close the popular White House tours and also suggested he would restart them. So he says, you know, I have to say this was not a decision that went up to the White House. So he's making a big stink out of it. It says here, uh, what the Secret Service explained to us was that they're going to have to furlough some folks due to sequestering. Uh, but uh, his... He's actually got record low approval rate right now, and so maybe this is damaging it. I don't know. But also, it could just be a cover. Maybe they just don't want people in the White House anymore in the, in the, in the palace, right? In the compound. Lean times at the Pentagon, U.S. Air Force considering building a network of tunnels for mobile doomsday trains, as if they don't have them already, especially under Denver and that, and throughout the nation. The reason why, it says, the reason why I haven't been... Uh, I haven't been discussing this is because it is a trivial event either way. Soviet America is so far gone, so dependent on insane state expenditures that the propaganda outlets lose their mind at the prospect of any budget cuts at all. They want to upgrade the nuclear missiles and the hundreds of underground silos that hold them. One idea is exploring the construction of a sprawling network of underground subway tunnels to shuttle the missiles around like a mobile doomsday train. This is interesting. It says here it's going to cost $3 million, uh, each to research the idea. Also, it says announcement from the Air Force describes a hair-raising concept intended to keep the weapons secure through 2075 as a system of tunnels where nuclear missiles are shuttled around on rails or some undefined trackless system. It says it will require proposals and ways to minimize uh, minimize likelihood that unauthorized persons could sneak in while keeping the system working safely and not sacrificing the doomsday train's ability to conduct worldwide operations. The project would likely be gigantic, expensive, and take decades to build all things that cut against the cut against these relatively lean times at the Pentagon. So, Russia starts preparing Z or yeah Zapad Zapad the 2013 war games against deployment of NATO missile shield. Now, this is a bunch of BS. This is what I'm getting to here, guys. If you haven't noticed, uh, they're all together. You know, whatever Russia, United States, they've actually done exercises with Russia, NATO, and that. So this is a bunch of hooey. This is for space weapons for building and militarizing, weaponizing space. That's what it's for. So this week, the Russian Defense Ministry will start preparing for a large-scale strategic military exercise with Belarus. Scheduled for 2013. This is followed by Russia Mall's beacons, bombs to thwart asteroids. Russian officials have proposed ideas ranging from planting beacon transmitters on asteroids to megaton-sized nuclear strikes to avert the threat from meteor collisions with Earth. North Korea fires off two short-range missiles in the East Sea. Now, this is a military, it says anonymously tipped. So, again, this could just be some disinfo, misinfo from the Pentagon, D.C., this says North Korea test fire two short-range missiles east uh, sea on Friday. The U.S. to beef up missile defense against North Korea. This is why I think it's BS, because they put this out there. At the same time, they want to do this. They want to spend $1 billion to add 14 interceptors to an Alaskan-based missile defense system responding to what is called a faster-than-anticipated North Korean progress on nuclear weapons and missiles. On that note, uh, we have some DHS radiation scanners sitting idle, says report. This is from February of 2013. Dozens of seaport radiation scanners are seemingly missing or sitting idle in the U.S., placing a question uh, of Homeland Security plans to sustain the equipment intended to check inboard cargo for weapons, usable nuclear and radiological contraband. U.S. relies on 444 radiation portal monitors to scan all cargo containers entering the nation. So I, I could have sworn I heard something about them going on highways or subways. Subways, yeah. Uh, DHS put them in subways, these radiation scanners. Uh, drones to be deployed as nuclear fallout detectors. 
So researchers have developed radiation detection pods that can monitor airborne radiation using drones without endangering human flight crews. The, quote, harvester system is designed to detect detonations of nuclear weapons. It can guide a drone to a site of a nuclear explosion by following the plume of gamma radiation where no onboard pilot could safely venture. So it could also be used to monitor fallout from accidents at nuclear reactors. So this is interesting. Claude uh, drone grabs prey on the fly just like an eagle. About harvesting, right? Says that um, these newfound limbs, they're learning to grab objects in mid-flight or even change a light bulb. Inspired by the way bald eagles swoop down to seize a fish from the water with his claws, University of Pennsylvania and Philadelphia have developed a fast-acting talon-like gripper for a small unmanned aerial vehicle. So we're talking about um, we're talking about autonomous robots eventually here. DARPA's self-feeding sentry robot is not a man-eater company protest. We completely understand the public's concern about futuristic robots feeding on the human population, but that is not our mission, says CEO. Look at this thing. The gripper, the turret, the arm, and a bin for combustibles. So real nice, isn't it? It says, don't let the chainsaw fool you. The eater robot is being designed for a strictly vegetarian diet. It says, robotic technology. There's been a lot of scare over the future of green since Soylent Green, but it's people eating people. But a DARPA-funded robot that forages for biomass will only consume plant matter as opposed to dead bodies or wayward pets, its creators assure us. Energetically autonomous tactical robot. So it's basically a flesh-eating a uh, robot that can use that to create energy, kind of like nanofibers. When they spray in the aerosols, it goes through your body. That's why I said we're already hooked up to the matrix. If you have all these nanofibers in you, and they're transceivers, and they can self-replicate. DARPA developing electro optics to detect and track human targets with 3D imaging. So this is this is what would go for what? For the bald eagle. So then the humans wouldn't be in charge of it. It would just take off on its own. Government uh, electro optical sensor. Researchers will brief industry this week, let me enlarge this here, on an advanced initiative to develop fundamentally new avionics uh, for 3D electro-optical sensors for target identification and tracking. So very sophisticated, right? This is DARPA using all your tax dollars during, quote, sequestering and tight cuts. We'll host a technical overview. They seek to develop new kinds of electro-optic sensing for aircraft and ground vehicles to detect and track people and other targets. And they get a lot of this money through funding, through research and develop, development grants by the government taxpayers, but also by consumers, right? Because our culture now is just all consumers and, and just buying things, no real connections or, or and stuff like that. Um, so their connection is with this. Their head face down in a smartphone, and they always got to have the latest one. Samsung Galaxy S4 eye tracking smartphone unveiled. So... It says they launched a smartphone which allows users to control its screen using only their eyes. It will be rolled out globally at the end of April. March 5th, global growth to remain tepid until 2015, says World Bank. Global growth, and get this, global growth will not get seriously underway until 2015, with industrialized countries stagnant until then, the World Bank's chief economist said on Tuesday. So they're going to purposely, strategically keep and quote, industrialized, developed rich nations like the United States and the UK, where unemployment is uh, skyrocketing, says there was a moral urgency for emerging countries to think of ways to keep their growth rates up during this period of sluggish economic expansion. Again, that's what they call it. Political and economic, financial, uh, wealth, integration and consolidation, that's what it is. And that's why they like the carbon tax, because like we said, the IPCC member, panel member said that it's all about what? Climate change is all about wealth, uh, wealth redistribution. That's how they will do it, if they can really push it. You hear from the Bank of England and the European Central Bank head and all these central bank heads, I do feel that there will be a certain period of global slowdown up to 2015, they said. And this is uh, what? Because it's post-consumer society. So it's not about buying. Now it's about conserving. That's what they call green. Right, so it's where you're, uh, where you don't flush your toilet, and then you filter your toilet water, and you drink that, and you don't spit on the ground, or otherwise you get fined, or you snoop on other people if they leave their water their lawn too long, too long, you know. So, uh, smart meters. 
uh, tiny little, uh, uh, you know, half a studio apartments for a family of four UK workers. And you think I'm joking? Look at Hong Kong. That's like a good example. Like China is a good example. Let's just see how they're living. That's how that's how they're talking about when they say they want to have a moral urgency for emerging countries to take ways to keep their growth rates up. That's how they do it, right? It's just because the people at the top are getting humongously rich, like in China and that. And these people are living like sardines. UK workers suffer sharpest wage fall of any developed country. As business leaders warn the pain is far from over, British workers have seen their wages plummet faster than any other workforce in a developed economy. A new study reveals real wages dropped by 4.5% between 07 and 2011, leaving workers with smaller incomes at a time of rising costs for basic necessities such as food, fuel, gas, electricity, not to mention housing costs. The, the housing cost, of course, is the housing market where they stole people's main uh, asset, their financial lucrative savings investment plan, which is their home equity. And so they stole that and looted that along with all of your pensions and that. And then, of course, the rising food, that's just to starve you out. So this marks a considerably sharper squeeze than the 2.7% fall in Italy. Another reason why people in uh, Britain were wanting to move to Australia and other places. Meanwhile, wages in Australia and Can Canada grew by 6.9% and 5.4% respectively. Tunisian man dies of self-immolation, says the medical official. He set himself ablaze to protest unemployment and poverty, succumbed to his injuries in a hospital. He says this young man who sells cigarettes because of unemployment, he was uh, shouting before he set himself on fire. Quote, he was demoralized. His father died. Four years ago, he has three brothers and a family he is very poor, they added, along with he is unemployed and came to Tunis a few months ago. He was very fragile, psychologically broken, and that is why he set himself on fire. Following the death, the Tunisian vendors took the streets in the capital where they shout anti-government slogans. Protests in Bulgaria culminate in spat of self-immolations from the 14th of March. Security cameras captured a moment when a Bulgarian man, disgusted by corruption in his provincial hometown, quietly doused himself in gasoline and set himself ablaze. This week, another man, the uh, fourth in less than a month, carried out the same act of desperation in front of the presidential quarters, headquarters in the capital. The dramatic self-immolations, three of which were fatal, bear striking resemblance to the events half a century ago in Eastern Europe when mostly young intellectuals rebelled against Soviet communist rule by setting the cells on fire. Taxpayers are facing an 8 billion pound bill from uh, quantitative easing amidst bank. So... The burning of money or the quantitative easing could cost the taxpayer in Britain uh, eight billion pounds, says the Bank of England. That's what they're warning. Maybe a first submission that money printing program may be unprofitable. Well, it's profitable for them. They make a lot of money, and you foot the bill. That's why we call it, you know, corporatism: privatized profits, socialized little losses. Top banking analyst subsidies to giant banks exceed seven hundred eighty billion dollars per year. Bloomberg's recent estimate that the big banks are subsidized to the tune of $83 billion per year created tremendous controversy, but as shown below, the real number is many times larger. That follows what? Whalen notes today that the big American banks get a subsidy in excess of $780 billion per year, so about a trillion, right? Was it one-tenth, one-twelfth of the GDP? What will become of Chavez's gold hoard from the 13th, so, right? So they want to know what's going on with the gold. How can we get it? So I remember in 2011, uh, Chavez began withdrawing 160 tons of gold from the U.S., European, Canadian banks. The bank president uh, in Venezuela said it was an act of financial prudence and sovereignty intend to, intended to guard against the problems of international markets. So it says here that it might forestall a Libya-style seizure of Venezuela's assets by Western powers. Chavez's death presents Venezuela with oil boom opportunity. So who will lead this nation? So it goes on and says that, uh, will Chavez's successor move left, right, or center? And they will the leader encourage rapid recovery of Venezuela's declining oil production? In Chavez's death, Obama sees hope for a new chapter, a new chapter of exploitation, right? They call it relation, relations. And they're not letting this go, Venezuela, that is, to probe Chavez's cancer poisoning accusation. This is from the 12th. Foes of the government view the accusation of a typical Chavez-style conspiracy theory intended to feed fears of imperialist threats to Venezuela's socialist system and distract people from problems. So they said that they will seek the truth. We have the intuition that our commander Chavez was poisoned by dark forces that wanted him out of the way.
Chavez speculated the U.S. might have developed a way to weaponize cancer after several Latin American leaders were diagnosed with the disease, including Argentine president colon cancer, Brazil's lymphoma cancer, his predecessor throat cancer, Chavez, uh, Cuban president Fidel Castro stomach cancer, Bolivian president Evo Morales nasal cancer, and Paraguayan president Lugo. Here are U.S. senators 1975 examining a poison dart gun that causes cancer. Thank you.